Every year, the IB forums for new teachers are full of, I'm uncertain about uncertainties. So we're just going to stick with the two rules that the IB want you to know. There are many other rules, and there can be some uncertainty about these uncertainties, but we'll try to avoid that. So if you're going to add or subtract data, then you have to add the uncertainties. Now, don't forget, uncertainties are inherent in the measuring process when you use a physical equipment, such as a thermometer or a measuring cylinder. So here's the first question. If I've got a nine centimetre piece of magnesium and I cut it leaving three and a half centimetres remaining, the uncertainty is 0 0.05 centimetres, so what's the length of the magnesium that I've actually removed? So there's the ruler, there's the magnesium. Now, you might think that's nine centimetres of magnesium, but actually it could be 9.05 centimetres or 8.95 centimetres. There is an uncertainty at that end of the ruler. Actually, there's an uncertainty at both ends, but we just assume that zero is exactly zero. There's the three and a half centimeters remaining. Let's put that to one side. And that's the magnesium that I've removed. So let's measure that piece of magnesium that I've removed. Now, it looks like 5.5 centimeters, but again, the nature of this process is that I'm uncertain to within 0 0.05 centimeters. So how would we write the maths out for this? No one's quite sure where to put the units before or after the actual value, 9.0 or 3.5. Different textbooks, different websites have different ways of doing it. So 5.5 centimetres, no problem. Now I have to add the uncertainties. It's tempting to subtract them, but you actually have to add them, always add them. So it's plus or minus 0 0.1 centimetres. So my real answer could be 5.6 or 5.4 centimetres for that length. Now, there's another rule coming up in a bit, and I used to get confused about these, so I used to make posters for the children on the wall and then point to that and go, come on, can't you remember this? Let's look at another example. So this is uh, adding, and when you add, you have to add the uncertainties. So 12 grams of copper plus 16.4 grams of gold. Now, notice the uncertainties are different there. So let's just work out the answer. That's a 28.4. Notice it's 0.4 in the answer because in the question, the least decimal place is, is one decimal place. I'm trying to stick with the rules from previous videos. All right, that final one that I got from adding the uncertainties, it can't be there. And it can't be there for two reasons. The first reason is that 0 0.01 is a lot smaller than 0 0.1. And you can ignore the smallest uncertainty if it's a lot smaller than the other one. Now, what's a lot smaller? You have to use your judgment. And the second reason is that uncertainty should only have one significant figure. So that last one is gone. So the rule for multiplying and dividing is that you add the percentage uncertainties. So let's try this simple question. What's the density of a block with mass one kilogram and a volume of two liters? Well, a liter is a decimeter cubed. The IB normally uses decimeter cubed. I love density. You see that little half there? Density is mass over volume. So I've got one kilo mass, and my uncertainty associated with that one kilo is 1%. So plus or minus 1%. Uh, and uh, oh, I should put the units. Yeah. And the volume, well, my uncertainty associated with that is 0 0.01 liters in two liters, and so that's going to be a half percent uncertainty. Now it's tempting to divide those uncertainties, but the rule is you have to add the percentage uncertainties. So that gives me 0 0.500 kilograms per liter, plus or minus one and a half percent. Now sig figs should really be used here. So for uncertainties, you should have a one sig fig, so that's plus or minus two percent. I'm going to put that on hold for a second then. So let's work out the absolute uncertainty. So what is 1.5% of half a kilogram per litre? So 1.5% of, of is multiply, half a litre. So that's 0 0.0075. And again, we've got to fix that to one sig fig. So plus or minus 0, 0, sorry, plus or minus 0 0.008 to one sig fig. Let me just fix the other one. 
So let's try another one. Let's work out the volume of the gas given that data. So the equation PV equals NRT, the ideal gas law, is rearranged to make volume V equals N times R times T divided by P, the pressure. So for N, there's a 1% uncertainty. For R, there seems to be no uncertainty. And for temperature, I'm uncertain about 5 Kelvin out of the 200. So that's a 2.5% uncertainty. Now divide that by the pressure. You can see where this is going. That that uncertainty for pressure is relatively small. They're all small, but that's, if it's relatively small, you can ignore it. So we can ignore that bottom uncertainty. So that gives me 200 point, sticking with three sig figs here. And adding up those percentage uncertainties gives me 3.5%, which is 4% to one sig fig. Now we might ask you about the absolute uncertainty. So I need to now calculate what is 3.5% of 200. So 3.5% of 200, and that gives me 7. So plus or minus 7. And that should be kilograms per litre. Excuse me. That should be litres. My mistake. So here's a quicker way of doing it. If you don't have to work out the percentage uncertainties, then you can just follow this kind of pattern. So put the uncertainty over the value and add it to the next uncertainty over the value and add it to the next uncertainty over the value. Okay, again, we can ignore that final uncertainty for the pressure. Now, once you've added those uncertainty fractions, multiply it by your answer, in this case, 200, and that gives me seven. And I've bypassed the whole work out the percentage thing. Okay, a couple of uh, common questions for averages. Well, just sum the data and divide by the number of data points to get, the, uh, to get your answer. But for the uncertainties, you also have to sum the uncertainties and also divide by the number of data points. So almost always, your uncertainty for your final answer uh, is the same as the uncertainties as each data point. And this isn't a hard and fast rule, but almost always, if you're uncertain to say 0.1, then your reported data point can't go beyond that number of decimal places. So final three, threes, I'm gonna get rid of those. And here, that one second, well, that looks good, no, but 250, we really should be 250 point to show that that trailing zero on the 250 is accounted for. 250 without the point, that means I'm uncertain to the nearest 10 seconds. But with the point, uncertain to the nearest one second. This is all very horrible. I can't tell you how many times I've had to redo this video for the silly mistakes I keep finding. But it is only worth one point on your IB exams. And what about all the problems with lab reports and uncertainties and sig figs? You know what? Show your lab reports to your teachers early. Uh, they're allowed to look at them and double check.